Nkrumah Media's Policy, I'm Tabi Shomulikai, Public Affairs Research Institute's Head of the Energy Program. Tracy Ledger joins me to discuss the Institute's policy brief on rapid electricity supply diversification in municipalities. South African municipalities are already in dire financial strains with fewer municipalities receiving clean audits from the Auditor General, and many are reliant on substantial transfers from the provinces and national government. So can you tell us why the utility scale solar PV is the most rapid way to significantly increase the supply of electricity in the country? Well, I mean, solar PV comes on stream much faster than other sources of electricity. So it can take 10 years to build a nuclear reactor. And in some examples, it takes uh, 15, 16 years to build a nuclear reactor. Many nuclear projects run um, behind time. We've seen these big capital projects like Hadoopi and Kasile are running very slow and very far behind time whereas you can put up a sizable solar PV farm in a year. So rapid um, scaling up of investment in renewables really is the most rapid way to get electricity onto the grid. And what does your research say about the effect of load shedding on municipalities, as well as the households and small businesses that rely on municipal distributors? Well, I mean, it's, I think it's good news for everyone that we've seen an end to load shedding for now because it has been very devastating for, for municipalities in many ways. So municipalities um, obviously are not getting revenue for the time that, that the power is off, although they're not, they're not losing all of that revenue. You know, people will postpone using their appliances till the electricity comes back on, but certainly they, they're losing a part of that revenue. But almost as important, and in some municipalities even more important, is the damage that that load shedding has done to the infrastructure. Um, and a lot of municipalities, the electricity distribution infrastructure is very old. Um, it doesn't take well to being constantly switched on and off, particularly when you're at higher stages of load shedding. So what that does is that creates a huge repairs and cost burden on the municipality because they've then got to go out and fix this, this infrastructure. And then what you find is that Often the infrastructure will trip when the power comes back after load shedding. So you'll have a couple of hours of load shedding. And then you might have 6, 8, 10, 12 hours of no electricity because the infrastructure tripped because of the effect of being switched on off over load shedding. And obviously this has had a very devastating impact on small businesses in particular, um, especially micro enterprises. People can't afford generators. They can't afford to put solar back up on. And they, they can't run their businesses. It's hard to think of you know, a business activity where you don't need um, electricity. Even if you are doing something that doesn't use that much electricity, you might be providing the service at night when people come home at work. You know, you can't do someone's hair in the dark. You can't run, um, it's very difficult to run a shop or to keep your shop open in the dark. So it's been particularly impactful on, on micro enterprises. Can you also tell us what is currently preventing municipalities from diversifying the sources of bulk electricity generation and how can this constraint be overcome? I think the main constraint really is the, the, the complexity of entering into a long-term power purchase agreement with an independent power producer. Um, you know, there, there are concerns from, from both sides. An independent power producer might look at a municipality that owes Eskom a lot of money and say, well, maybe that's going to be us in a couple of years' time. How do we know we're going to get paid? Um, municipalities, um, the, the, the skills and the capabilities that you need to be able to really plan for how to integrate renewable power onto a municipal grid are in short supply. Um, they're, they're quite difficult skills to access. It's not as simple as just buying a bit of extra power from, from Eskom. Grids need to be conf reconfigured. Um, we need investment in upgrading the grids. If we want to have more power going to, you know, previously underserviced parts of the economy, like the township areas, we need significant upgrades in infrastructure. It's difficult to think about where that money is coming from. Uh, we've estimated that the infrastructure maintenance backlog in local government and in the, in the electricity distribution infrastructure is about 200 billion rand. It's difficult to see where that money is coming from. So it's a combination of factors, really a combination of risk management in financing, increasing the capacity and capability of municipalities to be able to, to do all of the things necessary to end up with power on the grid, 
And it's also a funding issue, how are we going to upgrade all of the infrastructure and make the changes um, that are needed to, to metering, to grids, and a whole host of other things that are required. And does the current reduction in the frequency and intensity of load shedding have any implications for your recommendation that municipalities diversify their sources of supply? Well, I mean, obviously, load having load shedding end is, is very good news. But the, the bottom line is that we need significantly more electricity in the South African economy than Eskom is able to provide, even at its current 70% energy availability factor, which is which is the highest we've seen in years and, and is a significant achievement. We need significantly more electricity in the economy and we need cheaper electricity. And the only place we're going to rapidly get more electricity and get that electricity at a cheaper rate is from renewables, in particular, Lily, um, solar PV, where South Africa has an advantage. So just the end of load shedding is good, but that doesn't mean that we have enough electricity to put the economy onto a significantly higher growth path that will create sustainable employment. And how should municipal-owned electricity utilities be preparing for the unfolding energy transition in a way that can protect poor households and small firms? Well, I think it's critically important that we address the issue of affordability of electricity. I would say that for the 55% of households that live below the upper bound poverty line in South Africa, current electricity tariffs are unaffordable. And I know that we have um, sliding tariffs and cross subsidization to make sure that, that tariffs are lower for, for lower household incomes. But the bottom line is that millions of South African households are choosing between paying for electricity and paying for food. And there's nothing developmental about that. There's nothing progressive about that. The way in which electricity is currently unaffordable for households is entrenching inequality and poverty because it impacts the poorest households the most. And there's a real issue with the way in which we think about affordability. So there are four and a half million households in South Africa, one quarter of all South African households, live below the food poverty line, which means that their total household monthly income is not sufficient buy a basket of food. So for those households, no electricity tariff is affordable because even if they spend 10 rand on electricity, that is coming out of a food budget that already isn't big enough. We already have severe implications of, of food insecurity and, and child malnutrition. Um, the, the main cause of death of black women in South Africa is diabetes. It's completely diet related. More than one in four children in South Africa is stunted because of malnutrition. So we need to think about how we think about affordability in that context, but we also need to understand that electricity for poor households is not some kind of nice to have. It's fundamental to growing economic opportunity and improving people's standards of living. Access to electricity is critical for households' ability to cook food, which reduces the, the cost in, of food in the household and makes more nutritious food available. The research shows that a household that's got access to affordable electricity is three times more likely to start their own small business than a household that doesn't. So there are very, very many good developmental reasons for why we need to have cheaper electricity for households. So we've been very heartened by the recent statement by the Minister of Energy and Electricity that they are seriously going to have a look at the issue of affordability. And, and hopefully, our hope is that they will do this study in a way that involves the most affected households and small enterprises right from the start. That they don't go and develop a policy that actually isn't going to make electricity genuinely more affordable and not really consider the position of households right from the start. But I think, you know, if we can really address this affordability issue, then we can make a significant difference to the standard of living for millions of households. And lastly, Tracy, how could municipalities be supported through the Just Energy Transition Investment Plan? We have a chapter in the um, JetIP implementation plan, which deals specifically with municipalities, which has highlighted exactly this issue about the capacity issues um, and the, the financial constraints that municipalities face in, in you know, delivering their part of um, the Just Energy Transition. Um, the institutional structures that are going to be put in place to start delivering the contents of that chapter are going to be in place um, quite soon. There are going to be some initial meetings with stakeholders in the sector over the next couple of weeks. And I'm hopeful that by 
early next year, we will start to see some progress on, on implementation of all of those recommendations, which is specifically to support municipalities and to create an enabling environment to get much more electricity on the grid, and also to seriously consider this issue of affordability of electricity for low-income households. That was Tracy Ledger speaking to Prima Media's policy about the Institute's policy brief on rapid electricity supply diversification in municipalities.